mean, you weren't spending a, you weren't spending a weekend at the comedy club or a strip club uh, thinking, you know, I don't have to have a shower when I get home. Let's fire it up. Um, All right, man. All right. Well, welcome to Unstage with Dave Nystrom. I am Dave Nystrom, and today I have with me a uh, buddy that I actually haven't seen for uh, a couple of years, but uh, he stayed at my house yeah. in L.A. And yeah, yeah. You left me. You left me. I abandoned him in Los Angeles, where he has gone on to great things. Mr. J.J. Whitehead is here. How you doing, man? Hello, mate. Good to see you. Good to see you. So uh, what, yeah. is, what is new and exciting in your world? Um, well, I guess all the same things as everybody else around the world, you know, discovering new corners of our imp- apartment, <laughs> you know, doing what we can. Uh, we miss you down here in LA, man. I miss, I miss your little, I miss your little rustic home I... with your, your living room was already outside. That's true. So, yes. The, yeah. With your, your family would have had to be socially distancing here outside of their own home. Really, but I quite liked your digs. Um, other than that, other than missing you, yeah, we're doing okay down here in Hollywood. Some people are going crazy, and uh, some people are uh, are coping all right. Well, it's good. I'm glad to know that I'm that I'm missed. I, I was actually supposed to be in Los Angeles. My birthday's this week. I'm supposed to be in Los Angeles this week. I was going to go down for my birthday trip and hang oh, out, man. and that all got uh, pulled out from under me. Of course, there's yeah. bigger problems in the world than me not going to hang out in L.A., but still sucks pretty big pretty big you know you shouldn't you shouldn't shut up about that i mean it's a big deal <laughs> i mean yeah <laughs> to not let dave back into, into the state for his birthday man. <laughs> um so uh just to fill people in a little bit about you you are uh canadian born nova scotia kid uh cole harbor correct i am home of uh you and you and sid from sydney crosby's hometown yes yeah yes and uh then you you started stand up in canada um in toronto correct no, that's not correct. Oh, where did you start actually. your comedy career? I started stand-up in Scotland. Really? Uh, I moved to Scotland in 99, uh, you know, doing that the Canadian thing. I graduated from Dalhousie University in Halifax and uh, and had to get out and do, I think, what all Canadians do. You know, we go to discover ourselves. Uh, you know, you get that two-year rail pass from the Commonwealth. And I headed over to Britain, and I I was in Edinburgh, and uh, uh, that's where I started. I stumbled into a comedy club my second night in Scotland as a Canadian backpacker, and I uh, just got into the culture there, and started doing it. Oh, fantastic! I didn't I didn't know that. Um, and I know yeah, you man. you lived in the UK for a good like ten years, wasn't it? Yeah, fifteen years. Fifteen I years. Moved, I just moved to Los Angeles in in uh, well 2016 i would say officially uh but let's just be honest i just i missed all the barack obama years i i have i basically lived in la for for all of the trump years yeah i was to find my my move to la but yeah before that 15 years in britain uh as i always say i think i know more about britain than most british people i lived edinburgh manchester and london Wow, and uh, you had a pretty uh, uh, accomplished career there. You won the uh, BBC New Comedy Award. Yeah, I think that was how they convinced me to stay around. I won. <laughs> yeah, it's like a star, like the British version of like uh, not uh, yeah star. Let's just say Star Search. You know, last comic standing kind of thing. Yeah, uh, big te- big televised competition. So I won that as a young buck. I won it in two thousand. I won it. I, I moved. I moved to Britain. Started doing stand up. And I, yeah, and I guess I had a really good start to my career. I got the big, got a big push and uh, it was obviously enough for me to just have fun on the circuit for the, for the next 15 years before I even started getting restless enough to go, maybe I should move to LA. Well, yeah, but I mean, you also, you did a ton of touring during that time too. You've traveled the world cause you've done, uh, you've done tours through Australia and New Zealand, um, obviously all through the UK, uh, Europe, Sweden, places like that. Yeah, I mean that's kind of that's kind of the culture of stand-up comedy in Britain. If you base yourself out of Britain, you do you have bookers who are you know they're booking little uh, expat gigs in Sweden and France and you know Italy and Spain. So you're actually you can find a weekend of work. You know you just go down to Heathrow, you fly out 
it, it takes an hour to fly out to any European country, really, hour, hour and a half, and you can work there for the weekend. Um, you know, mostly enter, you're not entertaining French people. You'd be entertaining, like, Canadians and, and British and Americans and Australians who live there, generally. That's how they find their audience. But, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the great expanse of the British circuit. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of gigs all through Europe as well. Wow, one-hour flight, and unlike Canada, where it's a an eleven-hour drive for a two hundred-dollar gig in uh, Prince George. I know, it, I know it too well. <laughs> I mean, in my career, I did, of course, because I'm very proud Canadian, so I always had to come home whenever I could, and I and I did, I did the treacherous, like the winter tours. I drove to Sydney, Cape Breton, one time through a snowstorm uh, with another Canadian comic, Shane Ogden. Um, and I think we thought we were going to die several times. And I remember thinking, I've come home for this. This, is, this was my, it was like my Christmas treat to myself <laughs> in 2004, 2005, whatever it was. I thought, yeah, I'll, let's go see. So let's go see what doing a maritime tour is like in the dead of winter. And uh, yeah, I learned. Yeah, you have, you're not truly a Canadian comedian unless you have feared for your life multiple times. Yeah, I mean, every... Every stand-up circuit has its treacherous gigs or its no-go areas, but uh, in Canada, it's, it's, it's just the road, isn't it? I think the, the, the road can kill you if the gigs don't comfort you. Yeah, yeah, and it's... Uh... It's shocking that uh, that we've lost so few. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a it's a great thing, obviously, but man, it's terrifying out there touring in the winter time. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, it's that's the most treacherous part of a comedian's job. You'd think it would be the fights that we get in for what we say on stage, <laughs> but, the, but, the, but the hardest part of our job is uh, usually getting to the shows. You know, there's a there's a lot of marathon journeys in cars and a lot of tired comics at two in the morning trying to get back to some destination where they either have a cheaper hotel or uh, or somebody to hold. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've like I said, you've toured all over the world. What is your favorite uh what is your favorite country to tour in? Uh well, it all depends on on my mood, but I love coming home to Canada. So, I mean, my last I, my last album was recorded in Calgary, uh and because uh, Canadian audiences are great, and it's really refreshing. When you're a Canadian, there's nothing like coming home. I think I think any Canuck can agree on that. 100%. Um, so, I mean, in every country, I've got my favorite gigs, you know. In Sydney, in Australia, I love the Sydney Comedy Store. In in Britain, I love the, there's a club called the Glee Club in Birmingham, which is just amazing. Nice 350 capacity show. Um, so yeah, every, everywhere has got their amazing ones. I mean, I stumbled now that I've been touring in America, uh, with, with Jim Jeffries, he, uh, he took me, we did, uh, the, the, uh, what is it called? It's the Phoenix. It's in the round. It, oh, it's called the celebrity theater in Phoenix. It's in the round. It's where George Carlin recorded one of his more famous specials. And it's an amazing theater and it's in the round and it even, it even rotates. So I don't know why I did that with my finger because <laughs> you've got me on a on a on a head. So that that makes no sense. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> the, yeah, the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, Phoenix is in the round, and, and uh, it's just what what a fantastic gig to strut around uh, those boards while while the audience is taking you in. It's uh, that's a cool experience as well. Very cool. And you mentioned touring with Jim Jeffries. You are uh, currently a writer on the Jim Jeffries Show. I am. We did. Uh, we we did three seasons on Comedy Central. Uh, it, we're not. We're not going to be back. Oh, this season, I, but uh, I didn't know. But that. yeah, we've had three three awesome seasons. You know, we notched up some good accolades, and I think we. Uh, I think we tackled social injustice in general. You know, I think. Uh, you know, uh, in in Ireland, they got the uh, the abortion ban repealed, and I think we did a big set piece. On the on the issues over the abortion bill in Ireland, uh, in the run up to that, I think it helped. I think people were happy. Um, so yeah, lots of we've had lots of fun on the show. Wow, getting laughs, affecting social change, living the dream. Damn straight, yeah. <laughs> culture warriors, baby. We're culture warriors. Yeah, ah. and I know you're you're good buddies with Jim Jeffries. Um, was that just through the through touring uh, in the UK? Yeah, he cut his teeth in Britain as well. So he and I, yeah, we both kind of we both came up through the British circuit together, uh, and we lived together in Manchester um, when we were when we were brand newbie comics. So yeah, that's how that's how we know each other. You know, there's a few of us uh, who have 
eventually, I guess I'm the last one to join the crew. When I say a few, I mean, I can think off the top of my head who have come here from the British circuit to live here. There's Reese Darby of Flight of the Concords fame, yeah. uh, Matt Kirshen, uh, who uh, was in uh, Last Comic Standing. Yeah, I've, I've worked with Matt. He's a great, they all came great guy. Here, um, I guess, uh, maybe almost 10 years ago, probably the three of them. Yeah. You know, at the height of each of those shows. And uh, and I was just sitting. They used to live within a mile of me in London. We all used to be buddies. We'd all hang out, you know, for two for one pizza night on Monday nights and share the stories of our gigs. And I guess, yeah, I guess I was feeling restless and I thought I'd get the wheels in motion and make my way back to North America. So I decided to join them a few years ago. Excellent. And you mentioned that you recorded your last album in um, in Calgary. What is that album called? My last album is called Full Disclosure. Okay, available on um, iTunes and all the platforms. Yeah, it's available on everything. It's available on. Uh, it's, it's even on red vinyl actually as well, which is which is very cool. I had the opportunity to get it on vinyl. Stand Up Records put it together for me. Uh, so great vinyl record. Um, yeah, it's, it's for sale everywhere. And I mean, if you ever can't find a copy, I think I have seven left currently uh, in my in my living room and I'm thinking of giving them away for a steal just to promote my new album. But uh, yeah, that's the last one. And the new one is called Live Before Lockdown. Live Before Lockdown. And where was that recorded? Well, Live Before Lockdown is recorded all over the world. So that's we, uh, my producer and I, we decided to take advantage of the situation, the shitty situation that we're all in. Uh, but basically for the last couple of years, I've been touring with, with a ton of audio equipment and I've been capturing all my gigs uh, everywhere. So, so we're back in Calgary for a couple of bits. Uh, Boston, Sweden, uh, Glasgow, London, Rotterdam, and Sydney. Uh, but basically, how we came to that conclusion is uh, I had hundreds of hours of recordings of shows. I hired my producer and I just threw them all on his lap. And I said, "Here, wade through that and find." <laughs> the best best quality sound and best quality gags that you can find in there and we'll get ourselves going on a new album and so he did and that was probably uh uh late or mid-march and then he came back to me in april and said all right i've got i've got our i've got our final selections and then uh, and now we've got it together and i think it sounds great cool and that's being released uh this coming week you said right you would... It is. It's. It's on sale right now on uh, through iTunes for a five dollar advance sale uh, that I negotiated with them. So uh, if anybody wants to, you know, wants to spend uh, five bucks on a comedy album, it's available until Monday, and then on Monday it's out of my hands. On Monday it's whatever, whatever iTunes and Amazon, etc. I think they'll put it up to nine. I think it'll be nine ninety nine. But uh, for the next forty eight hours, it's on for five bucks. Five bucks. So for the next 48 hours, I'm going to put a link underneath the video. Um, you can click on that and get your advance copy for $5. You haven't had a chance to get out to a comedy club uh, because of the lockdown and everything. Uh, this is your chance to uh, support a comic and uh, a fantastic comic at that. Uh, so hey, definitely oh, well, click thanks, the link. And... I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm bringing the, bringing the comedy to you. Yeah, excellent. Um, is there anything else that uh, you have coming up in the future? I mean, I know it's uh, right now everything's kind of on knows, hold, but... Right? Who, who knows? future this is it's so this is so surreal what uh especially what comedians are going through not that i have a bias towards our ilk but of course i do i think uh i think for us and for strippers the future is very i mean let's face it we had the dirtiest clubs in the world already so, <laughs> i mean i mean you weren't spending you weren't spending a weekend at the comedy club or a strip club uh, thinking, you know, I don't have to have a shower when I get home. So, uh, so I miss all the clubs with the oldest carpets in the world, and they do tend to be the comedy clubs. So who knows what the future holds? I'm told that we might not be back gigging until 2021, which would suck. Yeah, I've uh, heard that too. Yeah. So what I have in the future plan, I mean, uh, I was touring with Jim Jeffries, so that's all been postponed. We had some great gigs lined up, so I don't know when those will be slotted in again. I had my own tour, uh, which I'm supposed to be in Bali right now. I was supposed to be off doing Kuala Lumpur and Bali and and Manila and stuff right now, but that all uh, got canceled, obviously. So maybe that'll get rescheduled next year. 
Um, who knows? It's like a clean slate. I mean, I'd love to get, uh, I'd love to be home in Canada as well. So maybe, uh, maybe somebody up there will throw me a bone and I'll be able to come up and see my people again. So it's really hard on the live uh, side of things. I mean, on the, on the video side of things, we're all thriving. I'm on a cartoon called Hot Wheels. It's a stop motion cartoon. It's called Hot Wheels City. And that is still going strong on YouTube, and we should be uh, having a new series of that out soon. Oh, These cool. are all things that you can do from your room, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I'll put a link. Uh, I'll put a link to that as well. Yeah, I'm doing this in my in my basement. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I can't leave my I mean, house. Hot Wheels, so. I, just for anybody who's curious, Hot Wheels City. If you like stop motion, it's fantastic. But also, it's for kids. It's targeted towards kids. Of course, my comedy is for adults and for us. But uh, the great thing about Hot, Hot Wheels City, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're targeting your three to three to eight year olds. Um, and it's generally a laugh. There's a few jokes in there that parents should get, I would assume. But uh, but yeah, that's the that's nice. The I'll uh, I'll show it to my 11 children and uh, I'm sure they'll love it. Exactly. exactly <laughs> <man>. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that is uh, that is it. Thank you so so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna put the uh, again the links to all those things underneath the video, so check it out. Uh, you have the next 48 hours to download um, uh, live, live live before, before lockdown, lockdown for five dollars after it uh, doubles in price. So definitely uh, click on that and do yourself a favor to listen to a fantastic comic and a good friend of mine, Mr. JJ Whitehead. Thanks for coming, man. Hey. Thanks for having me, man. We really do miss you down here. It's great to hear your voice again. Thanks. As soon as this whole thing's done, I'm, I'm heading directly there. So I'll see you hopefully yeah, sooner well, than later. Belated birthday, baby. Perfect. Thanks so much.